Hi there, it's Asia, and today I've prepared for your answers to the most challenging IELTS speaking part 1 questions reported in recent exams. There are also words and phrases that will help you give high scoring answers to these topics yourself, and a PDF guide with recent IELTS writing and speaking topics for you to download. Ok? Let's get started! One of the topics reported in recent exams is rivers. You may be asked, is there a river near you? If there is one, probably this question won't catch you off guard. But what if you come from one of the 20 countries in the world where there are no rivers? What do you say? Firstly, not having direct experience of something doesn't mean that you know nothing about it. After all, you don't have to own a dog to talk about pets. Here is one way to reply. There isn't one, because I live in the center of a flat, dry country. But I remember visiting London and sitting on the banks of the Thames, watching it flow through the city. One day, we went downstream as far as the estuary, and I was impressed by how wide and unspoiled it was. Instead of talking about a river nearby, you could discuss a similar experience from your past. Let's have a look at the vocabulary. A bank is the side of a river. To flow is to move. The water in the river flows. Downstream is the direction of the river as it flows to the sea. An estuary is the wider part of the river as it enters the sea. And when it's not significantly wider, it's called a mouth. Unspoiled is not touched by development. Even if you have never been near a river, you could answer this question by referring to a river you know about. Actually, I live quite far from any rivers. The River Nile, however, is in my part of the world and I'd love to see it one day. After all, it's the longest river on earth and the cradle of ancient Egyptian civilization. The next question is, could you describe your favorite river? The question demands some topic-specific vocabulary. Here it is. I live on the River Kennet, which runs through the center of my city. The source is a spring up the hills and is just a stream for the first 20 kilometers or so. Then it gets much wider, so it's navigable. Where I live, there is also a canal that connects the Kennet with the Thames. A source is the beginning of the river. A spring is a place where water comes from the ground. A stream is a small, narrow river. Navigable means it's used by boats. And a canal is a man-made passage filled with water. By the way, have you noticed that I use the definite article the with the names of all the rivers? Let's talk about it. How to use the article the with bodies of water? We always use the with rivers. The Thames, the River Nile. Similarly, we use it with oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And with seas, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. However, we don't use it with lakes, we just say Lake Coma or Isico Lake. Now, let's have a look at the next question. Do you know a river that is used for leisure activities? You could reply. The river near me is famous for boating and other water pursuits. People also go fishing there and there is plenty of wildlife to look at, especially birds. So there are lots of bird watchers around. Boating is rowing or sailing boat for fun and recreation. Water pursuits are water activities. Wildlife are native birds and animals of the region. Bird watchers are people who watch birds for the hobby. The next topic is Watches. You may be asked, how often do you wear a watch? 
Here is a more traditional answer. All the time, the one I'm wearing was given to my dad by his father and so it's a family heirloom. Even though it wasn't super expensive, it has enormous sentimental value. It's also got a good vintage because it's an aviator's watch from the 1960s and that makes me feel quite classy when I put it on. Let's have a look at the vocabulary. A family heirloom. We don't pronounce the first H. Heirloom. This is a valuable object belonging to a family for several generations. Sentimental value means that something is treasured because of its personal meaning. A vintage is something from the past of high quality. An aviator's watch is a watch used by a pilot. And classy means stylish and sophisticated. Of course, nowadays, few people use watches and instead rely on their mobile phones. So I could say, not much. Most of the time I use my phone, but I can see why some people wear a watch. They're more accessible than a phone, so they're better for punctuality. Watches are also more stylish and can make you say something about yourself. Accessible means easier to find and use, and punctuality is the habit of being on time. The next question is, is there any advantage to wearing a watch? I think there is. First of all, you don't have to worry about it running down because it doesn't need to be charged. It either has a long battery or you just wind it. It's also more private as you can just glance at it if you're in a meeting and it looks good. There are some cool straps you can get in different faces. To run down means to lose power, and to charge, to fill a battery with power. To wind means to turn a knob on the watch to make it work. Please note the pronunciation. The verb is to wind, to wind your watch. The noun is a wind, there is a light wind today, to wind a wind. To glance is to have a quick look at something. And if you look at your watch, you have a strap that goes around your wrist and a face, the front of the watch with hands and numbers. The next question is, when did you get your first watch? My first decent watch was given to me by my parents as a coming of age present. It has a black dial with silver hands and a metal strap. What I really like about it is because it's classical, it will never go out of style. Coming of age is reaching the age when one becomes an adult. Usually it's 18 or sometimes 21. A dial is the flat surface under the glass. And hence are pointers that indicate the time. To go out of style, is to become no longer fashionable. Another topic that was used recently is driving. Can you drive? Oh yes, I've been driving since I was 17. That's the legal age when young people can take their driving test in my country. And I got my license as soon as I could. I've been driving since I was 17. That's the present perfect continuous tense. You're saying for how long you've been doing something, so it's a perfect opportunity to use this tense. I've been driving for two years, or I've been driving since I was 21. A driving test is a test you must pass before you're qualified to drive. Once you pass it, you get a document that shows that you are qualified. This is your driving license. You may get a specific question about the driving age. At what age are people allowed to drive in your country? In the UK, it's 17. Actually, you can apply for a provisional driving license when you're 15 years and 9 months old and can start driving under supervision. 
This is useful because it helps you develop your road sense and learn the rules of the road. Road sense is awareness of how to drive in the traffic. And rules of the road are regulations and customs related to driving. Another question is, what do you like best about driving? Having a car is a lot more convenient for getting from A to B than using public transport. And it's much less time consuming. I also love that I can listen to my own music. To get from A to B means to travel between two points. Time consuming is taking a lot of time. Our next topic is taking photographs. And the first question is, do you like taking photographs? I try not to be too snap happy and take photos of everything, so I'm quite selective. I never take selfies, but I like to capture special occasions like birthdays or to have mementos of when I travel. Snap happy means you're keen to take photos of everything and selective is choosing what you think is the best. To take a selfie is to take a photo of yourself. And a memento is a thing that, um, that you keep that reminds you of a person or a place. Next, how do you keep your photographs? Like many people, I keep most of my photos stored on my mobile phone, but I have some hard copies that I've printed and some traditional style photos that I keep in albums. It's nice to get these out and go through them with other people. To store means to keep in a particular area. Hard copies are printed on the paper rather than a digital image. And albums are blank books used for inserting photos. To go through means to look or examine carefully. You may be asked, do you have any photographs on the walls of your house? Quite a few, actually. In the kitchen, there is a collage of snaps with family and friends. And in the living room, there are some artier shots of seascapes and portraits. Most of these are framed, while uh, the ones in the kitchen are just stuck on the wall haphazardly. A collage is a selection of images placed closely together. Snaps are informal photographs. RT is an informal word for artistic. And a shot is a photograph. A seascape is a picture of the coast and the sea, while a portrait is a formal picture of a person, usually the head and shoulders. Framed means placed in a frame in this rigid structure holding the picture. And haphazardly means in a manner that has no organization or principle when you just put them everywhere. Okay, these are the new complex topics reported in IELTS speaking part one. But many topics are used over and over again, such as wearing shoes or jeans, writing with a pen or pencil, barbecues, trees, and I've covered all of these topics in the previous videos. You can download the PDF guide with recent IELTS speaking and writing topics on our Telegram channel if you follow the link in the description below. And for more IELTS speaking topics and sample answers, please watch these videos. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!